would like to introduce our speaker for uh, this morning. She is a beautiful lady inside and out. She is a lovely lady. And she is a friend of mine that I met when I was at seminary. I, I, I would live at, at seminary. I was there for like five and a half years. And I met our speaker there. She was a student too. She's done and she's out doing ministry. She is speaking. And I am going to share with you her a little bit uh, about her. Now, uh, our speaker today, she is an expository, an expository teacher. She is a mo motivational speaker and an author. She is the founder of She Stands Kenya. She is, uh, she is from Kenya. She comes all the way from Africa. She lives here in the United States, but she's from Africa. And she's going to share with you, okay? And uh, she also, she's, uh, she is the founder of Stand Kenya, which exists to equip women with biblical principles for everyday living. She is part of the SBTC women's team and contributes to the writing of material and speaking engagements. She holds a Master of Divinity from Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary and a PhD. She's a doctor, a PhD from Trinity College and Seminary. She is married to James Suma Wanji, and she has two beautiful, handsome, handsome sons. Please welcome our guest, Dr. Chow Suma. Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. It is so wonderful to be with you this morning and I am so glad that I already feel so much at home. Amen. When I look at you hugging and kissing it just reminds me of my home in Kenya that we are not afraid to embrace and to love on each other as we love on Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for the welcome that you have given me. You know, the Bible talks about how beautiful it is when brothers, sisters, dwell together in unity. And I have seen that unity already, and I ask in the name of Jesus that you will choose to continue with that unity. Now, before I start, I would like to introduce my family to you. I am married to James Tsuma Wanje who is one of our cameramen today. You know, I told him, this is a women's gathering, and he asked, can I come, please? And I said, okay, as long as you don't talk, you can come. And so that's my husband. We've been married for about 26, going on to 27 years. We are blessed with two boys. Morris, the one uh, on the far right, my, my far left, he is a graduate student right now. And uh, I keep telling him, son, we need to start looking for a wife for you. And so you mothers with daughters, I do have a 23-year-old that I am praying that the Lord will bless with a woman who knows and loves the Lord. Amen. The other one, the younger one, we keep telling him, it's okay, you can wait. He's 20 years old. He is a student at the university. He is a junior right now. And these are the blessings that God has given us. These are the rewards God has given us. We do not deserve that, but God chooses to bless us anyway. And you know, as the Bible says, these are the arrows that we, the warriors, have been given so that we can point them to the direction to which they need to go. And so mothers, as you are blessed with children, and even the ones that God has put under your care, just remember, you are the warrior. Do not be intimidated. Point them in the right direction so that they can live out the purpose for which God created them. Before we begin, allow me to pray for us, and then we'll go on to the word. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the day that you have given us. We rejoice and we are glad in it. I thank you, Lord, for these women who have come this morning to just hear, thus says the Lord. I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ that you would speak to each one of us that by the time we are done, not only will we have reconnected with others, but we will have connected more with you and built intimacy with you. 
We ask in Jesus' name that Holy Spirit, you who is our teacher, teach us this morning. You who is our helper, help us to see what we need to do with the message that we receive this morning. You who is our wisdom, give us the wisdom we need to know how to move forward with what we have learned this morning. We love you, Lord, and we honor you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we have prayed. And God's people say, Amen. 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 Well, this morning, I would like for us to speak about Arise and Stand and Change Your Story. And part of that is, as Sandra has said, I am part of the women's ministry that we call She Stands Kenya. And ours is to equip women with biblical principles for their day-to-day -day living. We live in a world where nowadays we look for everything and then we come and see where does the Bible help us to put a rubber stamp on it? But when you look at the Bible, we are called to begin with the Bible. And so that is the prayer that we have as we move on with this ministry. And I am so blessed to work with women from different socioeconomic stages. And one of the women that I know, her name is Naomi. Naomi, as you can see her there, I was with her this last December. She was born and raised in the coastal region of our home country. And when she was really young, her parents died. She had other siblings. And so she was taken in by her aunt and uncle. But her aunt and uncle said, if we are going to feed you, if we are going to educate you, there's one requirement. You have to convert to Islam. And so Naomi, as a child, she did not know what else to do. And so she agreed. And so she and her siblings, as long as she lived with her family, with her mother and with her aunt and uncle, she had to adhere to the Islam religion. When she went to high school, which was in boarding school, she began to hear about Jesus. And when she was graduating, which was last year, my husband and I, one of the ministries that we do is we work with the youth. And so she came as part of the young people who came so that they can be encouraged and be educated in the word of God. And at that place, she said, you know, I have heard the word of God and I am making a decision now to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Naomi at that time, she also had decided instead of living with her uncle and aunt, she was going to move in with her grandmother who is very, very poor. But she decided, poor as she is, I would rather live with her than adhere to a religion that I do not agree with. Yes. And so Naomi, in her poverty, in her many questions, she came to Christ. And I had the privilege of watching her being baptized by my husband, James Wanje, at the ocean in her home country. Yes. Now Naomi's story, of course, this is just the beginning. Number one, the light of Jesus has come into her. And now she lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. But not only that, Naomi has decided that she is going to be that light that is going to move forward, not only for her family, but also in the community that she lives in. Naomi knows, as the word of God says, that she carries the light. Naomi also knows that she is the lamp and with a lamp, you have to put it on a lampstand so that you can shine and shine in every place that God has called you into. Amen. Naomi is an example of what I want to keep doing as a child of God. Amen. So the question to you this morning is, what is your story? What is your season right now? What are you going through right now? Naomi had the issue with her uncle and aunt. And she's very thankful that they did take care of them. And yet she knew there's something more she needed than just being taken care of. That was Jesus. You see, my sisters, we all have issues of life that if we sat down and shared them, this day would not be enough because we have stories. It may be that the story you have is right in your home. It could be with the person that you live with. You try to shine your light. But it's so difficult, you feel like it's been quenched by something that you're going through with that person in your home. It could be with your children that you have tried to live out life the best way you know how. 
to obey God and yet there's that one or there are those in your home that much as you try to shine that light, they're not listening and you're getting discouraged. It could be in your church. In churches, that's where you have all manner of sicknesses. And it could be that you're trying so hard to minister to people, but there's someone there or there are issues there that are just hindering for the light to shine through more. It could be also your health or health in your family. It could also be societal issues. Nowadays, I keep saying you turn on the TV and it's like you're watching a horror movie. Am I the only one who feels like that? It's bad news after another. And if you keep focusing on that, you may end up feeling like, man, nothing is changing in this world. So what is your story this morning? Naomi has hers and she's choosing to light the light that God has put in her. She is choosing to change her story. What about you? What about me? How can we change our stories even amidst the challenges that we are faced with? So how do you stand and change your story? You think about it, whatever we go through even now is something that somebody else has gone through, somebody else is going through, somebody else will go through. Nothing is new under the sun. And even it was in the biblical times that they were also having their own challenges. You look at the Gospels. When Jesus came into the scene, the Jews were waiting for the Messiah. They were being frustrated, persecuted in their days. And they cried out, oh Lord, will you hear us and come? They had the Romans who were ruling over them then. Would you come, Lord, would you come? And it's interesting that when Jesus shows up, of course they did not know that this was the Messiah. Their expectations were very different from the way Jesus made their appearance. And you see, even when they saw that, he was one who was able to perform miracles. If you read the Gospels clearly, you will see they followed him because they needed help from him. In the book of Matthew chapter 5, actually chapter 4, before you get to 5, you hear and you read about Jesus going from place to place, healing all kinds of sicknesses, Amen. demonic possessions, you know, in physical ailments. He healed and healed and healed, and people followed him. And isn't that what we do many times? It's wonderful to follow Jesus because he does heal. He does perform miracles, and yet, when you get to chapter 5 of Matthew, you see as the crowd follow him, he pulls out to the Mount of Olives. And there, he gives a sermon. He calls his disciples and he begins to teach them. And when he teaches them, he does not focus so much on what they need from him. He focuses on what they have that they need to also give out. And so when you look at Matthew chapter 5, we'll just read two verses. Verse 14 to 16, this is what it says, to 15. Jesus is speaking and he says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Can we say amen to the word of God? Amen. And so here is Jesus. People have come, they're receiving healing, they're following him, some of them are curious, and then he sees his disciples and he tells them, guys, I know all these things are happening, but let me tell you about you and what it is that you have with you. Now, there's a distinction between they had Jesus with them, we have Jesus in us by the power of the Holy Spirit, don't we? And so Jesus is speaking to the disciples, and he says, shine your light, shine your light. Amidst all the challenges that are here, shine your light. Because this is how you stand up and change your story. Difficulties are there. In those days, you know, you had the Romans who are, like I said, persecuting them. You, they had challenges. And when you look at the people that Jesus talked to the most, ministered to, 
There are people who are socioeconomically, they were not the who's who's. And so these are people who had challenges. And yet he sits down, and even when you talk about the disciples, really, you go through one name after another, maybe except for the tax collector, Matthew. Most of them really came from very humble homes. And he tells them, but there's something that you have. Shine your light. Because this is how you get to stand up and change your story. And so I ask you again, my sisters, what is it that you're going through? What is it that you're experiencing? Even with that challenge, you are called to shine your light because this is how you change the story. Amen? Amen. And so when you talk about shining your light, you look at, okay, so what were the Jews thinking when they heard this? Because in those days, Jesus used examples that they could identify with. So let's just remember, he was talking to them. And here, we're trying to see how does that apply to us. When the Jews would hear about light, light was a symbol in their community. And it was a symbol of God's presence. Just like it was a symbol for the Romans, it was glory. You read the New Testament carefully. Paul uses that word a lot. And all he's doing is he's saying, we are giving glory, not to the gods, to the little kings, we are giving glory to God who deserves all the glory and honor. And those days also they had the Greek who had, the, had thought that knowledge was where the power was coming from. But the Jews knew where it came from, it was the light. When you look in the Old Testament, Moses was asked to build a sanctuary for God, because the altar, that's where God dwelt amongst them, if you read your Old Testament. And in there, God told Moses, I need you to build a lampstand, and there put seven lamps. And when you go to the book of Revelation, you realize the lamps stood for the church. And so seven lamps, and then he says, and turn the light on, put light on them, and the light is never to be extinguished. And so when Jesus speaks to the disciples and tells them, you are the light of the world. And he says, a city on a hill cannot be hidden. He's saying that light should never ever be extinguished. And my sisters, you have the light of God in you. For as long as you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The question is, are you shining that light? Because the way we are reading from scripture is that because you have the light in you and you are the lamp, so the lamp needs to stand in a place where it needs to be lighting up what is around it. So what is around you and how is that light affecting what is around you? Think about a city on a hill. Verse 15 tells us, a city on a hill. If you go anywhere, in my home country, and I think here in America, it can be very easy not to really consider how significant light is. Because, you know, if you watch the eclipse last Monday, when it started getting dark, if you're standing on the streets, what happened? The street lights started coming on, right? And so you didn't really experience the darkness. There, in other parts of the world, like where I come from, when we say it's dark, it's dark. <laughs> because there's no other light. The only thing that shines the light is the stars. Yeah? And so Jesus is talking about a city on a hill. Just think about that. In a community where it's completely dark, but up on a hill, there's light. That light cannot be missed. Even if you wanted to not see it, you have to see it. Think for a moment, my sisters. Think of that darkness. Think of standing and looking at a light in total darkness. And think about the fact that in this world, there is so much darkness. So much darkness. You don't even have to leave your home to see that darkness. You just need to turn on the TV. Yeah. So much darkness. You are the light. I am the light. You are the light. And when we shine, my sisters, 
even when they try to turn that light off, they cannot. Because the Holy Spirit cannot be quenched. He always is in you. It's up to you, though, to allow him to do the work that he has been called to do. You are the light of the world, the Bible says. A city on a hill. It has to be visible. And so the Bible continues. We are told. So the disciples had the light with them. And they gave the light. And, we, and Jesus has given us that light. And so what are we doing with it? A city on a hill. Even in darkness, a city on a hill is still visible. Christ's light should not be covered in the life of a believer. We have to be the light if we are going to change our story. And so the question becomes then, if a lamp is put on a stand, it gives light in the house. Like I ask, how and who are you lighting? In Jesus' time, darkness was real. You know, I did not appreciate the sound that says, um, you are Lord and the light at my feet and the lamp to my did I say it right? <laughs> Light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. Because when you think about that and you think about the darkness of this world, what you need is light. And if he is the lamp unto our paths, and we are saying that we are the lamps, then we have to be the ones who hold the light so that the paths can be lit. And so the question becomes again, this is how it's How do we let our light shine over others or on others by using our spiritual gifts that's one of the ways this is one of the areas that even myself I have ignored a lot I have tried so hard to be everything and I forget Jesus has already given each one of us something that we can use to light that lamp Remember in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, the word of God says, this is the Apostle Peter speaking to the churches that are being persecuted. And he says, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of he who has called us by his own glory and goodness. We already have everything we need. Yes. And he has so much chosen that he will give that to us by endowing us with gifts of grace, our spiritual gifts. And we have a scripture there, and I want to read it, which is found in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. And Peter is talking to the church here, and he says, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. He says, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Shall we say amen to the word of God? Amen. amen. So each one of us, we have been given a gift. Now when you read the Bible, may, may I encourage you, every time you read the Bible, look at what truth you're being given, look at what promise has been given, and also look at what command has been given. So that when you look at this, if you're not very sure about using your spiritual gifts, just look at this. Number one, as each has received a gift, that's already a truth there. It is true that each one of us has a gift. Amen. Amen? Amen. Use it to serve one another. It is a command that we need to use that gift to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. It is true when we use that gift, then we are being good stewards of God's varied grace. Now, when you look at grace, my sisters, when we talk about this is something that we do not deserve, but we have been given anyway, we talk about the unmerited favor of God, that God has looked upon us and favored us with those gifts. And if that's the truth, then we have 
every reason to do everything we know how to utilize the gifts so that we can shine our light amongst people so that we can stand up and change our stories of being some of us pure warmers to being actively involved in the work of God. And then you look at another truth toward the end, in order that in everything God may be glorified. As you use your gift, my sisters, God is being glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. So you want to keep changing your story? You want to stand up? You want to light the world? One of the ways that you can do that is choose to use your gift. Of course, the question becomes, do you know what your spiritual gifts are? Well, the beauty is God is able to show you. The beauty is we can all help each other in finding out what our gifts are. The beauty is there are even some surveys out there that you can use to find out what your gifts are. The beauty is also, even when you're not very sure, when the Bible talks about gifts, and when you go to the Bible, you will find like in 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4, Romans 12, it all talks about gifts. And then in the end, especially in Corinthians, Paul, when he is done with talking about gifts, he says, but there's one thing that you should do, and that is love. So that even when you're not sure what your gifts are, there's something we all can do, and as you do that, I guarantee you, in the name of Jesus, you will find out what you're good at. Just keep loving. Just keep loving. As Christ has loved us. Amen? Amen. And so using our spiritual gifts, where are their needs right now? I met a friend today, and I cannot believe she's 83 years old. She is a beautiful lady that I was talking to, and I had a cup of coffee while I conversed with her. And she was talking to me about, in her neighborhood, about how people are lonely. And even nowadays, people, you know, there used to be those days that we would go knocking on doors. People are so lonely. Now they're coming to knock on our doors. People are looking for that love. People are looking for that companionship. People are looking, really, they don't know this, but we know they are looking for Jesus. Amen. And Jesus is telling you, the gift that he has given you, just use it to serve those God has placed you around you. There's a survey that was done. It was done by Lifeway. And this survey was done last year in October. And women were asked really, what is your greatest gift right now? Your greatest need right now? And these are some of the needs that they say. Number one, the need women say was they want to grow in Christ. You know, we keep hearing that people don't want to hear about the word of God anymore. People don't want to be discipled anymore. I mean, we have all these ideas about what we think women don't want anymore. And yet you sit down with a woman. She wants to understand the word. She wants to grow in Christ. So are you a teacher? Is that your gift? Sandra here, she's a teacher. She's using her gift to equip you. And if you're not part of this ministry, I encourage you to join it. Because she teaches you so that you can go and teach others. And before you know it, we are building a movement of women who handle the word correctly. Amen. 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 So women are looking for someone to help them grow in Christ. The survey also said they are looking for support during difficulties. Do you have that gift of mercy? Do you have that gift of exhortation? You want to encourage someone. You have the gift of faith. You can stand with someone and say, you know what, it seems difficult. I don't know how it's gonna end, but I'm gonna stand with you in faith. Women are looking for that. Use it to serve others. The survey also say, women are looking for friends. You know, we were created for relationship. And you and I know that life is better when it's lived in community. Yeah. People are looking for friendships. And you know the beauty about friendships? You don't have to have a specific gift to want a friend. All of us, we may express it differently, but we all were created to be part of a fellowship. 
And so the question becomes, when you go to church and the only person you speak to is the one that you know, you know the way we can be a click in churches? Think about the sister who has come in and she really doesn't know how to make friends. She needs you. My husband and I, we moved to Fort Worth when I went to seminary in the year 2019. And before we moved, we really prayed that the Lord will place us in a church where we can be part of a fellowship that we can just do life with. We joined a church and we are really thankful for the church because we learned a lot of things. It was a very difficult place to make friends. It was a very lonely place. We would come home from church and we would wonder, wow, how long is this going to be? But you know what we did not do? We did not stop going to church. We kept going. I joined the women ministry. It was difficult to make friends in the women's ministry. It's just a unique church. But I did not stop because I knew I needed fellowship. By the time we were leaving, because God called us to another church, we did not leave before God called us to a different church. I had the friends that I made, I could count them with my one hand. Now I say that I'm one of those people in my home country, they call me Mama Kanisa, which is Mama Church. When I go to church, I'm always looking to see who I can talk to. And so if I tell you that I made only five friends or less, it, it says something. Because usually, I just, I like people. <laughs> and I just want to hang out with people. I'm not the most outgoing person, but I just love to be with people. And so by the time we're leaving, I just had a handful of friends. But you know what? I am so thankful we stayed because that also birthed a ministry for me. The church that I'm in right now, as I go to church every Sunday, my sisters, I ask Jesus in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit to help me see people like he sees them because I know what it means not to be seen. I ask Jesus to help me to hear people the way he hears them because I know what it means to not be heard. I am reminded of Matthew chapter 9 when Jesus was teaching in synagogues and he was explaining the word and the word says that he saw the people and he saw their helplessness and hopelessness and he had compassion on them. And I usually ask Jesus, could you give me compassion for your people? And if my sisters were here, they would tell you I grew up, because I can do very well on my own. You know, people like those who they can do well with their own company. But as God has given me that compassion for people, he pushes me, go see this one, go pray for this one. And so God has birthed a ministry of seeing for me. And it came out from a challenge I had in the church that I attended before. So again, I ask you. What challenge are you going through? Could it be that God is using it so that he can build a ministry out of it? Stand up, my sister. Change your story. Don't allow the challenge to be the handicap in your life. Allow it to be the gospel that God uses to reach so many who need to be reached anyway. Amen? Amen. And so, again, the survey said that People are looking for help in times of discouragement. Oh, I don't know how many of you, but I have a lot of things that I get discouraged about. And I need that sister to just sit down and we talk. Even if she doesn't have an answer, to just hear me out. Use your gifts to serve others. It's saying people are looking for healing from hurt. We are not healers, but we know the one who's a healer. Amen? Amen. So do you have that gift of faith that you can say, you know what, I am going to believe with you and I'm going to pray with you for as long as the Lord has given us breath. We don't give God a deadline. We just keep asking anyway. Amen? Amen. And again, it says, help with struggles in their faith. And also again, they want to feel needed. My sisters, when you look at this list with this survey, each one of us here, we have a ministry and we need to be actively involved so that we can stand up and change our story because as we change our stories as we light that light in the world then somebody else's story also begins to be changed had it not been for the lord to introduce me to naomi the woman that the young lady that you saw in the beginning 
And the Lord allowed me to be part of her life as she came to the Lord and made a commitment to him. He used me to touch one, and that one is touching so many right now. And all goes to the glory and honor of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So my sisters, stand up and change your story. We have talked about, you know, people are in different situations. Life is hard, guys. It really is. And I know you can testify to this. But you know what? We have life and we have life in us, who is Jesus. And people need that. And they need to hear it from us. Remember in the book of Romans chapter 10, Paul is speaking and he says that people need to believe, but how can they believe unless they are told? And how can they hear unless someone goes? And how can that person go unless they are sent? We need to be sent. We need to send each other to go and help someone change their story. We need to be the lamps that are put on the lampstand so that the light can shine and it can shine ever so much. And so I ask you today, are you willing to evaluate your life so that you can say, okay, Lord, I know I'm here. Some of you here will say, you know what? I've been doing the best I know how. The beauty about the word of God is we can never, ever get it all, right? We just hear and learn it in parts. One day we will learn it in full. And so there's always a room for improvement. So maybe that's you. That you are doing the best you know how. But you know, you want God to reveal himself to you more and more so that you can see what else you want me to do, Lord. Oh, you are here. And the reason you're not doing much is because maybe somebody hurt you. Or maybe there's some circumstances of life that you feel like, this is too much for me. I cannot do anything right now. I'm waiting until this season is over and then I can serve. I can stand up and change my story. No, the Lord our God is the God of all seasons. There's never going to be a perfect season for us to shine the light. Amen. We are always needing to shine the light. So if you are one of those, or maybe, maybe you feel like, you know what, I don't think I have anything to give. I have been in those situations where I'm so intimidated, maybe by the people, and really this is how I feel. So maybe they have not done anything, but my feelings are telling me that's what they're doing. I feel so intimidated. I just feel like I don't really have the gifts that they have. You know, that person, you know, Sandra here, she's an incredible teacher. You know, this one, she's an incredible person for hospitality. What can I give? I have nothing. Well, today we have been reminded of a truth that none of us, can say that we have nothing. We are a body of Christ Amen. and every part counts. Yes. If you don't believe that, try to hit your toe with something really hard today <laughs> and see how the rest of your body is going to respond. Every part counts. You are needed. And even when you are not sure what to do, as 1 Corinthians 13 reminds us, love anyway. And God will keep showing you as you choose to love. And so as we move toward finishing, I'm going to ask you to stand if you can. I don't know what you're holding on to. I don't know where this discouragement is. I don't know what season of life you're in. And so I'm going to ask you, just put your hands forward and hold them like a fist. Make a fist. And as you make a fist, think about some of the challenges that you are faced with. It could be that child that you love so much and yet they don't seem to be anywhere close to Jesus. And because of that, maybe you're intimidated even of speaking about Jesus to other people's children. Because you're thinking, how can I tell other kids about God when my own is running away from him? It just could be in your home. Things are not as good. Maybe they are just challenges that you have absolutely no control over. Or it could be a sin that you know that you have committed. And you know, Satan has a way of condemning us when we sin. But as you have asked for forgiveness, just remember the Bible says that there's no longer any condemnation for those who love him. 
who have been called according to his purpose. You don't have to hold on to that. Or it just could be in church. I mean, let's be honest. Churches, Christ is the head of the church and he has given responsibilities to human beings just like we are. And they are not perfect. And sometimes they may truly hurt us, but still that is the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. And you have the responsibility to be part of that community, but you just don't know how. Maybe that's your challenge. It just could be that you're being lazy. I have been through those seasons where I just procrastinate. I keep saying, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll get involved tomorrow. No, today is the day. You know, Satan is the one who likes to tell us about tomorrow. But we know Jesus is the Lord of today. Amen? Amen. And so take a few moments on your own as you hold on to those feasts and pray for yourself. And as you pray, begin to release the things that you've been holding on to. As you tell the Lord, Lord, I want to shine the light that is in me so that people can be impacted, that your gospel can go forth, that your kingdom can progress. So take a few moments and pray for yourself. And then after that, I will pray in closing. As you pray, begin to unfold those fists and release everything to him who is able to do in excess and in abundance above all that we could ever think or ask for according to the power that works within us. We have the power in us and it's the Holy Spirit of Christ. He indwells us and we can do everything that he calls us to do by his power. Holy Spirit, he is our helper. He is your guide. He is your wisdom. He is your counselor. Even where you have been hurt, he is your comforter. The Holy Spirit can never leave can never forsake you because it's Jesus' promise that he's saying I will not leave neither forsake you all he wants you to do is just go there's going to be times when you will fail but you know what even the Bible talks about a man of God a woman of God we can fail even seven times we can fall but we still rise and so we stand in the name of Jesus Christ knowing that it's not on our own power, it's not on our own strength that we want to shine our light. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit who indwells us. So release everything that you've been holding on to and allow the power of God in His Son Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit to work in and through you so that you can shine His light and stand and change your story. Let us pray. Father, I thank you that you sent your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to come and die. And Jesus, we have life and we have it more abundantly because of the work that you finished at the cross. Thank you, Jesus, that we can say, as Paul said, that we have been crucified with you. That it's no longer us who live, but it is you who lives in us. That the life that we live in this flesh, we live it by faith in you, O oh Jesus, who has come and you has given your life for us so that as you have sent us to go and shine our light you have sent us to stand up and stand out and change not only our stories but other people's stories we can stand boldly knowing that our lives are in you and that we have your strength and so i thank you for these ladies oh lord i thank you oh lord for your word lord god that is theirs I pray in the name of Jesus, as each one of them chooses to use the gifts you bless them into, Lord God, that you will use them to bring glory and honor to your holy name. I pray in Jesus that today there's going to be a woman here who will use her challenges, Lord God, to allow you to build a ministry in and through her. I pray for the woman in a different season today that she will use her season, oh God, 
to shine her light on her that others may see and others may come to you. I pray for the one who is challenged and discouraged that you will encourage them and remind them even that they are needed in the church of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Father, that you have met us with us today. I thank you, Lord, that we are not the same because you have spoken to us this morning. This we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.